welcome. We welcome you to worship with us at Chula Vista Presbyterian Church, where we seek to know and make Christ known. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather together in praise and worship of our faithful God, because our help and hope rests always in the Lord our God. We bring our praises and thankful responses to our saving God. Blessed be the Lord our God, who is our security and home, and whose mercy and grace free us from all that traps us. Blessings, reverent honor and glory be to the Lord our God. We come together to praise, the wor praise and worship our all-powerful God because we are confident of God's generous care over us. Our eternal trust is in the name of the Lord our God who is our maker, our savior, and our timeless home. Amen. Loving God, we gather here as your holy people, hungry for your word, longing for your presence. Breathe your amazing spirit into our lives and heal our hurts and pains. Restore us with strength and courage. Empower us to be your witness, witnesses of peace in all the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. The next hymn is number 391, Take My Life. No matter where we have been, 
where we are or where we are going, God is there. No matter what we have done, God loves us. In the certainty of God and his love, let us honestly confront our shortcomings as we pray together. God of great love, we clearly remember the times when we have thought you to be less than loving. We recall with pain the dark times in our lives when we could not see your light, nor did we seek it. We remember with remorse the occasions when we did not recognize the small pleasures of our abundant life. We confess that we have been quick to criticize and hasty to condemn. Forgive us for all that has come before and grant us grace to go forward in your forgiving love. Lord, we offer our silent prayers of confession in this moment. And now hear the assurance of pardon. My friends, listen to this gospel message. God is always present to us, even when we are not present to God. And the love of God never lets us go, even in the times when we are wounded beyond words and let go of God. Hear this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the grace of God's love, we let go of our regrets and embrace the goodness of God's steadfast love. Praise to the Lord. Amen. stars and you call them by name the skies proclaim God you reign your glory shine you teach the sun when to bring a new day creation sings God you reign God, you reign, God, you reign, forever and ever, God, you reign, you part the sea. My song remains, God, you reign. You hold my life, you know my heart, and you call me by name. I live to say, God, you reign. God, you God, you reign forever and ever. God, you reign. God, you reign. God, you reign forever and ever. God, you God
God who reigns forever and ever. God, you reign. God, you reign. God, you reign forever and ever. God, you reign. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, creator and preserver of all life, we gather in worship this morning in humility and gratitude for what you have already accomplished for us and for the promise which brings hope. We praise you without ceasing for you have forgiven our sins and made us your children, joint heirs with Christ. Through you, you come to us and claim us as your own. And we ask that our first response would be say yes to the love that you offer and then continue in faithfulness and in gratitude. We pray that you would renew and refresh us for following your path as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Too often we have allowed our attention to be turned away our priorities to be disrupted. We have focused our energies on that which is secondary and temporary. Create within us a sense of excitement to the calling you have given to us and an openness to your leading. Give us hearts of commitment and faithfulness towards courage and a new obedience. Help us to focus our thoughts and prayers into the source of all joy and peace, being in communion with you, our God. Enlighten our hearts and minds to the opportunities to meet a need for caring that sits right next to us. Lord of healing and wholeness, we bring to you our concerns and our prayers. And we lift up special loved ones who are upon our hearts this day. Hear now our silent prayers for them. O oh Lord, hear our prayers and allow us to sense your presence here and now. And we ask you to listen to us now as we continue in our prayers in the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Old Testament reading is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18, and verses 23 and 24. Listen for the word of the Lord. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with my, all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, and I am fearfully and wonderful made. For wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning and greetings from Mira Mesa Presbyterian Church. And uh, our church is sad that uh, Pastor Emily is not with us on a regular basis anymore, but we have great fondness for the Chula Vista Presbyterian Church, and it is my pleasure to be here. Uh, Reverend Tracy Davenport and I had talked often about doing some pulpit exchanges, and now we get an opportunity to do that. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel in the sixth chapter. I invite you to listen now to the word of the Lord. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Here ends our reading of God's holy word. May the Spirit bless it to our hearts and to our minds, for this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me, please? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Sometimes when I turn on my computer, I get this annoying little image if the program is loading ever so slowly. Perhaps you've seen it. It's a little 
hourglass. It signifies that I must wait for a minute, or perhaps several minutes, or perhaps it gets locked up and it never really changes. Or some of you actually may be old enough to remember the opening lines of the 1965 soap opera that is still running, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. For many long years, long before the invention of the mechanical clock, the hourglass represented the passing of human time. It is filled with tiny granules of sand which represent our minutes and our hours, passing as they drop through the tiny opening between the two glass bowls. In fact, the first hourglass is thought to have been crafted in the 8th century by a monk who served at Chartres, France. Years later, the famous cathedral was built in many hours and many lifetimes. It stands as a beautiful reminder of God's presence calling people into worship. Looking at Psalm 139, we see a beautiful cathedral of a poem, raising our eyes to wonder at the creator of all that we see. It speaks of God's character. It speaks speaks of God's substance and essence. What should we know? God is the first mover in all of creation. The writer sings that God knows all that we do, where we go, and even what we think. In fact, we are also on God's mind. And God knows us so well. He discerns our thoughts and our choices, our words and our actions. That is so mind-boggling, we can't even wrap our heads around it Or to use the common phrase, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. That kind of knowledge bothers the psalmist, the author attributed to David, so that he wants to escape, to hide out, and not to be seen by this God that knows every side and every aspect of him. As if it weren't enough to be so completely known and accepted, the good news is that we are loved with the presence of God that moves towards us and God goes with us. In fact, if we try to hide, God would search for us and find us, as is so commonly attested to in the scriptures. Think of Adam and Eve hiding in the garden of of Eden. Or Jacob at the well, hiding from his brother, and he sees the ladder into heaven. Moses running away and telling God he doesn't want to speak. Or the other prophets running in the opposite direction that God wants them to go. But God goes to them each time, and even to the disciples to whom Jesus says, come and follow me. Psalm 139 reminds us that the God who calls us to service is way ahead of us and also behind us. God carries us in this, in his gentle grace, just like the children's song. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. There's nowhere to go that God doesn't go there with us. That is a wonderful word picture. But guess what? When we say that God is all around us, we mean more than just filling the space. God's personal movement to know and hold us includes our hours. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. 
I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Verse 17. The greatest comfort of all is that the movement of God towards us means that God cares for us. And it is that God is with us everywhere and always. There is no hour in our day that God isn't there first. What is our response? Psalm 139 is a challenge to us to tune in to God. When Jesus tells his disciples to trust and not worry for tomorrow, he is recalling his comforting promise of God. Modern psychologists have a word for it. It is called mindfulness. Mindfulness is living fully engaged with life. Studies have shown that many people walk through their days unaware of how time passes. And when asked, those same people express or express feelings of loneliness and unhappiness. On the other hand, those same studies have found people who live fully in the present, who are tuned in to their activity and the people they are with. These people feel connected and content. That is the basis of mindfulness. Living in the present moment gives a person resilience. Because when hard experiences happen, and they do, mindful people are aware and make good judgments, or what we sometimes call in the Bible, wisdom. Instead of overreacting or checking out the other direction, mindfulness allows us to put perspective on events as a single period of time. Events become hours of sorrow or of joy, of hurt or of happiness, of frustration or of learning. In a sense, those are the hours in which we fully live as spiritual human beings. Pastor Emily and I both work as chaplains in the fire department. And one of the big problems facing firefighters, police, and soldiers as well is experiencing traumatic situations that can etch a disturbing image into your mind or an experience that just won't go away. These moments sometimes start coming back on a regular basis and they can become disabling or overwhelming, constantly crowding crowding into the subconscious or even the conscious parts of the brain. And it holds our brain, our mind captive. These experiences had names in the past. Sometimes they would be called battle fatigue, shell shock, or if you go back to the Civil War, they called it having a soldier's heart. Today we call it PTSD standing for post-traumatic stress disorder. What we have learned is that the brain gets stuck in a loop and cannot process the meeting, so it cycles and it repeats. It may be set off by triggers, a loud noise, or seeing an image or somebody that reminds us of that significant event, and then pushes the mind into that loop once again. Over time, it is as if the sands of the hourglass freeze in place and normal function of life grinds to a halt. It gets even more complicated when you layer in the split-second choices that were made at a, a time in history. and You begin to think what might have happened if things had been done differently. Guilt, or sometimes even survivor's guilt, cause this to continue. If only I had done this. If only I had tried something else or shouted out. The scenarios get, keep getting played over and over again. 
The way to help avoid locking in this disorder is to help the body and mind process it earlier before it gets into that frozen state. So as chaplains, we are called in to gather with the crews soon after the event and to facilitate a process where the experience can be sorted out before it gets a hold in the mind. Sometimes it needs information that will fill in the gap and make things seem much more logical or normal. Other times, it may need a theological filter to help people process the question, why would God allow this to happen? It gives us, as people of the gospel, an opportunity to help others and keep them from getting stuck in the loop. It allows them to return to mindfulness. When we recognize that God is the first mover in our hours, always with us in everything, we can be more mindful of the gift of life that we have. We find meaning. There's a little story that the baby spider came up to the mother trying to get its attention and asked, why are you always hanging out on the web? That's a joke. Probably the millennials will get that one. But now, you and I may be hanging out on the web and thinking it is a wasteful time. But in this case, it is the work of the spider itself to do that. It gives the name spider its meaning. You and I are human beings made in the image of God. As C.S. Lewis says, we don't have souls. We are souls. And we belong to our God. As the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians, it is through the saving work of our Lord that we live and move and have our very being. We recognize that God is the first mover. He is for us, first and always. We grow in mindfulness of our hours, resting safely in his care. Then we understand true meaning of what life is about as we respond with thanksgiving and praise. We can call it worship. If we see every minute, every hour, as not time spent or wasted, but instead invested and shared with our maker, we develop the habit of devotion. That is worship. As the Westminster Catechism, another word for the word teaching, as it says, what is the chief end of humankind? The answer that the Catechism gives is to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. That is our purpose. Our minutes and our hours become habits and lifestyles of grace. Our choices are tempered with the resilience of knowing that the Lord is present in power. We avoid getting stuck in a loop of despair or anxiety because we know life's meaning and purpose. These small things are what God uses to build a lifetime. The little things are significant. We learn in his word that God counts the little thing. In Matthew's gospel, we know that God cares about the fall of the sparrow, about the tears of the hourglass, the growth of a mustard seed, or a widow's mite. Many may not even note that this minute or this hour of worship on a Sunday is of any consequence at all. But whatever you and I do, when we do it unto the Lord, partnering with the Lord, we are hour by hour building visible beauty and love for the whole world to see. We celebrate God's first movement and God's care for us. 
We learn mindfulness in God's grace, and that gives us meaning in the days of our lives. Let's go back for a moment to the cathedral in Chartres in France. The story is told by Robert Fulgram. During the Middle Ages, a traveler from Italy came to see the great church that was being built there. Arriving at the end of the day, he went to the site just as the workmen were leaving. He asked one man, covered with dust, what he did there. The man replied that he was a stonemason. He spent his days carving rocks. Another man, when asked, said he was the glassblower. He spent his days making slabs of colored glass. And still another workman replied that he was a blacksmith who pounded iron for a living. Wandering into the deepening gloom of the unfinished edifice, the traveler came upon an older woman armed with a broom. She was sweeping up the stone chips and the wood shavings and the glass shards from the day's work. And what are you doing, he asked. The woman paused, leaned on her broom, scanned around the room and looked up to the top of the cathedral. Me, she said, I am building a cathedral for the glory of Almighty God. Psalm 139 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart, and lead me in the way everlasting. May we be mindful of the living God in our lives. Please pray with me. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the way that you seek us out, the way that you know us, our comings and our goings, and the way that you give purpose for our lives. Help us to respond, to be available to you, to serve the purpose you have created us for for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen.
Receive now the benediction, the pronouncement of God's blessing upon us. Go forth in the love, hope, and the power of the gospel message. Seek out the way of the Lord in all of your comings and goings. Be mindful of God's presence in your life. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you now and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen.